Praise the Lord Jesus. This is Minister Paul out here in Northern California. And um, it's 9-9-2015 at 11.09 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I'm putting together and putting forth a compilation of all the lives that were touched. All the people that were affected. All the change that came forth. All the blessings and, and testimonies that have come forth. From us just obeying God on Operation Oklahoma, Jesus Matters in regards to the Ten Commandments. I, I humbly do this, but I'm so excited. You know, it is, it is both an honor and a privilege to be able to come on here and share things that happened all around the world. And in so... And so just getting right into it, in no particular order, in no hurry or rush at all, I'm going to go through everybody that sent in a testimony, and everybody, uh, I, I ask you this before I begin, because I'm just going to, in no particular order, start reading what was sent to me after sharing my own short personal experience. I want to say this, I want to precipice this with this, if you are in any way a part of Operation Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Jesus Matters. Whether you prayed, whether you helped, whether you supported, whether you made signs, whether you uh, marched in your home, whether you just simply believed for us, whether you encouraged us, you know, if whether you showed up, whether you marched, whether you cheered us on from, from home, wherever you are in this country, God saw it. And the world saw it. It made the, the newspaper, it made the media. Hashtag Jesus Matters began trending all over the world. Simply because of our obedience and our love for the living God. In these times we're in, I invite you to put to comment your testimony in unlimited space. Take all the space. You can post a link to a, a video testimony. You can type it in. You can uh, share it uh, however you feel led because we did this. Through the, what Philippians 4.13 says. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We did that that day. And Jesus Christ was glorified. So please, if, if you don't hear your testimony or you were blessed in any way, I invite you to post a link to your testimony through video format. Feel free. I will make sure it does not get spammed. I will unspam it. I'll keep a close watch on this because... This was Jesus Matters, and he still matters, and there's more to do. So three of the ministries off the top of my head that I know of uh, that were involved in this in, in several different ways and showed up, and there are, there was several, four now, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. But, but remember, there was 40 people that showed up from 12 different states. And there were several ministries that were just communicating through Google Plus or Facebook Messenger or text or cell phone that literally so many people became a part of this that uh, I want to encourage them to come forth if you don't hear your name because God heard it. So uh, off the top of my head, the Lord's Hour. This brother, I had never met him, but I'm... Uh, <laughs> Is the very first time I laid eyes on him, I believe he's local to that area. Uh, and he had the, does a radio show every Friday, by the way, that you can get blessed and it's prayer and the word and, and news. And this brother, he uh, it was he was an anointed, you know, he, he marched, he testified, his he, he prayed, he prophesied. God used this man mightily. He used us all mightily in the, uh, from start to finish. He was a prayer warrior, as were we all. So I wanted to mention him. Also, uh, and, and in no particular order, uh, Susan E. Waldrop. 
W-A-L-D-R-O-P. Feel free to put a link. Remember, this is what the body is is growing in it. Um, I'm looking at this book right here. She sent me the Reverend Susan E. Um, uh, prophetic here it is prophetic speaker entrepreneur I'm looking for a ministry name but I know she has a, a YouTube channel on here and, and several other ways Susan uh, Susan Waldrop org so and she is available for speaking engagements I'm just looking at this book so also she she had given us three bottles of oil and we did, she wanted us to go in proxy for her because she couldn't make it and, and just stand in the gap. And she sent us these oils and this anointing cloud. I want to tell you that we used that oil on several, several different people, more than I can count on both of my hands within the first three hours. What was supposed to be a 90 minute uh, prayer vigil turned into three hours. And KFOR, the local TV station there, they filmed it all. As we were carrying signs saying, repent, Jesus is coming, uh, obey God's commandments, that we came around that corner, I think it was, anybody remember this? We came around the corner the second or third time, and there was a group of uh, people that were uh, with a Confederate flag movement, and they were there, and they, they, they aired that night, because I watched it from the hotel room, they chose not to air the us screaming and shouting and, and claiming repentance we were making noise in anybody uh, more noise than anybody in Oklahoma City that day they chose not to air it they chose to air the the other group but but God had his way because they are going to end up airing this type of stuff they're going the media is going to have to address the body of Christ taking a stand from Kim Davis all over the world uh, and we're going to touch more on this in a separate video of this uh, other monument. The Lord had mentioned Arkansas to me, and I made videos about Oklahoma and Arkansas. Uh, now we read that they, they the, the, uh, the, the Temple of Satan, or whatever they are, they're, they're not of God, and we, we lift them up in prayer. Yes, we lift you up in prayer, whether you like it or not. We do. We have that right. Amen. Um, they now want, they have a... Uh, they're going to sue the state of Arkansas if they don't allow this uh, satanic Baphomet of Satan uh, with children at, at his feet next to the Ten Commandments. Did you hear what I just said? People are being imprisoned for standing up for their rights. I don't want to get, you know, political here, but I certainly, I've never been a politically correct person. So if you're looking for that, this is not for you. Because I, I stand with Kim Davis and I stand with anybody standing up for God's authority. That's what she cited was God's authority. She was put in jail for six nights and is now free, but I know that it's not over. It's just a beginning, a nexus, a genesis. Um, they now want to put that Baphomet in Arkansas. And the Lord had told me Oklahoma and Arkansas. And so that's, that's the latest news. The, the, another ministry uh, that, that was really involved in this and brought, they brought, you need to picture this. They brought a uh, worship uh, banner, spiritual warfare banner flags that they marched in front of us and flew. It was powerful while playing worship music and up there doing spiritual warfare. Um, the, the, the name of this ministry was, uh, let me go over right here. Voices in the Dark Foundation. I'm going to say that again. Feel free to comment. Voices in the Dark Foundation, Rachel Small. She was a mighty help and blessing in this, but as was all equally, because God is no respecter of person. So again, this is in no particular order. And then uh, Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Uh, she has a, a great YouTube channel on here of teaching and, and prophetic warnings. And, uh, you know, I, I really think that uh, that people should check out her channel and her Facebook. She, so that is preach, be a voice, not an echo. And um, this sister, there was three Rachels that showed up. <clears throat> Remember the Rachel that drove from Connecticut? Whew. That's a testimony in and of itself. 
So let me give my brief testimony, and then I'm going to read these other testimonies, and we're going to give Jesus Christ some glory, and then we got work to do, saints. we got work to do. My testimony over the Oklahoma City Jesus Matters is as this. The Lord had asked me if I would go to Oklahoma. I'd never been there before in my life, and he told me that I would face persecution and attacks. But would I be willing to go anyway and take a stand for godly laws rather than ungodly laws of man? And I said yes, and I even knew going in advance that there would be opposition and persecution. And I, I didn't really know anything about the area. I didn't know exactly what I was going to say or do. I didn't know when I just first put the call out if anybody was going to even want to be a part of it. And the enemy came in like a flood the moment I first announced it. And God, faithful and true to his word, raised up a standard against the enemy because I was in right standing with God. Therefore, his protection and provision was around me and it's around you if you're in right standing with God. Um, and no weapon that was formed, and the enemy formed several, was able to prosper. I, I showed up perfect flights, two flights there, two flights back, both of them on time and coming back 10 minutes early, no delays, as other airports were being evacuated. Picture this, as other airports were being evacuated for gunmen, this and that. Perfect, thank you Ruby for chiming in, she agrees to, perfect flights. That morning when I woke up, the morning of the event, Satan himself sent an evil spirit into the room. And uh, I'm thinking, I have two hours to be there and I have no idea what to say. And I just said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, I showed up and there was people, uh, at least 12 people already there with signs before I even arrived. And the Spirit of God just began to, Brother James came there with me, and we'll talk more about Brother James, and I know he has a testimony all by himself because he was with me the whole time everywhere we went. He was with me, a, a, just a great brother in the Lord. Um, and he's coming out here to, <laughs> he's coming out here to California for the Sacramento March too, which is another uh, video I'm going to do. Um <clears throat> I showed up and the anointing fell down and we, we prayed, uh, we prayed, uh, uh, you know, at the monument, we gathered, we prayed that God's will be done and we marched seven times and anything that the enemy had tried to throw in my mind as far as doubt and fear and uh, immediately left and we began to literally prophesy, there was a, a family of three there uh, that, was, that was witness to, <laughs> uh, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We we talked to several people from the other group marching. Uh, we witnessed to them. We had our shirts on. They, they were saying, amen, God bless you. <clears throat> the whole thing was a blessing. And uh, it simply started with an act of obedience. That's what we did was we obeyed God. And now it's spreading across the nation, which is in a separate video. So obey God and he will show up. I could spend an hour on what I experienced there, but healings, deliverances, salvations, everything God said he would do is more. And this is what I didn't tell people. <clears throat> I was waiting for the permit approval. And on the day before we were to show up, she assured me I had applied in plenty of time. Uh through the, the state capitol there, the Oklahoma City has a separate process, uh, Drew, his name, he was all for it, but that only covers city property. He was, We were fully approved through the city. And what the state was claiming that the, there was gonna be on state property, and as it turns out, having never been there and then getting there and seeing it, it was state property. Um, they required a separate permit, which I applied for in plenty of advance, and then they did not uh, respond either for or against and I truly believe that they were unwilling to take a stand in writing that people were wanting to come from all over this nation and say Jesus matters they did not want to take a stand either for or against so what the person did there was take that day off on Friday and when I called they gave me a verbal approval but could not find my permit 
and uh, I, I, what I told God was, if the state police, because I live in California and it's very strict here, if the state police had came out and said disperse or you're going to jail, I would have told everybody, look, I got this. This was what was in my head. Flying there on the plane, wondering why they could only give me a verbal because, you know, I, I live in a world where if it didn't happen in writing in events such as this when dealing with the government, it didn't happen at all. They can say whatever they want, even though I have witnesses to the conversation. Unless you have something in writing, uh, it never happened. That's how the, the government works. And my plan, flying in there under spiritual attack, obeying God, walking by faith and not by sight, and not knowing what I was getting into, was if, if they wanted to disperse the crowd, I would have told everybody else there, look, I got this. Because because God was going to tell me what to say, even if I went to jail, I would have just continued walking. I would have told everybody, like, get separate from me, get far behind me, go home. And I'm sure that many of them wouldn't. But I, I meant this with all my heart to God. And I never told anybody this. I will walk. They cannot stop me from walking I would find city property and it would have been a longer walk and I would finish the seven and if they arrested me I would go to jail. I would not allow anybody else to go to jail other than me. And I was willing to face jail in a state I'd never been in, in a situation I'd never been in for Jesus and none of that happened. What happened was they embraced us. They allowed us to walk right next. They allowed us to walk right onto the property, up to the front door when the business was closed on a Saturday, right to the commandment. They allowed us, uh, am I telling the truth, saints that were there? They allowed us even a restroom on the, the, the other side of it that was uh, uh, normally closed. They allowed us uh, a restroom inside on the bottom level to go and use if we had to go to the restroom. They allowed us to walk right up around the building, which you can't do here in Sacramento, California. You can't get that close to the building. We were literally walking around the building. And so I want to thank them. I want to ask for prayers of protection over the law enforcement there. It's a tough job. I talked to one of them when I was leaving. Um, no disrespect at all. No anger at all. Just was totally blessed by the great state of Oklahoma. And God loves Oklahoma. So that's my testimony. And now having said that, let's go to, and, and if, uh, if, I, if I name a name and give a testimony, I've received, uh, I have received approval to uh, use their name. Uh, and I verified that. Do you want me to use, you know, your real name? And, and they, so in saying this, I have everyone's permission that I will mention. Okay, this one, and I'm just going to go through these. Minister Paul, uh, this, uh, this was the two days after the event on 831. It says, hi, this is Susan Geary from Oklahoma City, and I was at the march, and I immediately knew. She has a deliverance ministry also. I don't know the name of it, but I knew exactly who she was just by reading this. I feel the Holy Spirit. She's in healing and deliverance and has an anointing on her life. So this is hers. I, I just automatically remember. I'm in a deliverance ministry here in Oklahoma City. A few things I wanted to share with you is that while you were praying for healing for people, I prayed for a young lady. Now, she prayed for a young lady, and this young lady is named Autumn, and now we're friends on Facebook, and now she's, uh, she's getting together with Debbie from Texas, and she's going to march. She lives in Texas. She's going to march in the Texas Jesus Matters also in Austin. This will all come out, but she had nerve pain. The, the person that uh, uh, Minister Susan here is talking about in Healing and Deliverance, the person that she prayed for, had nerve pain in her leg, but was willing to march anyway. Her name's Autumn from Texas. Was willing to march anyway in pain. And uh, Susan Geary laid hands on her, and the pain vanished. And for the entire march, she was in zero pain. Tell me there ain't a God. Tell me Jesus is not the healer. Because this woman will testify in front of 40 witnesses that this happened. Matter of fact, later... Uh, then the, the next day, James and I met her again at the Capitol uh, Autumn and prayed again in a circle. And the power of God fell. And Jesus Christ was right in the middle of us three, James, I, and Autumn, pray. And we were all fire for God for the duration of our stay. This all happened.
praise you, Jesus. Feel free to comment on this. Okay, we're still talking about Susan Geary here. I prayed, I prayed for a young lady who had pain in her leg. That'd be Autumn. And after praying, she said her pain left. Praise God. You may also remember as we were praying for another young lady, Rachel, who drove by herself from Connecticut. And we spent a lot of time talking to Rachel too. There's anointing upon her life too to go out. The Lord told me to tell her that she was his beautiful bride in a beautiful white gown. You and others also spoke over her and blessed her as well. Another thing I wanted to share is that one of my friends who came with me, Larry, witnessed to a lost family of three who weren't part of our group, who just came to look at the Capitol. Larry said he talked with them for 30 minutes, sharing his testimony and the love of Jesus. Larry was so elated because they received this with joy. And I remember seeing him off to the left, when, if it's the people I'm talking about. I was totally blessed by everything that happened that day. Thank you so much for organizing this through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Blessing, Susan Geary. Let's go to the next one. I just feel like I'm there again right now reading this. This is from Buddy Smith, great brother in the Lord. These are people that, that showed up. Shalom, Brother Paul. Blessings to you from the Lord Jesus. I am glad you are home safe and you had a good flight. You asked us to share what the Lord revealed to us from our march and prayer time with him. Brother, I have to say it was a real blessing meeting you and James and all the other believers who came as the Lord called them. And that's the key. They came as the Lord called them. That's obedience. They responded and obeyed as the Lord said, go and stand for me and march in obedience for me and righteousness. As we all know that all who came, we are just vessels and servants of the Lord. He did it all. All glory to Jesus because Jesus truly matters. Amen. And this is true. Jesus matters and he did it all. Amen. I, I certainly couldn't have done it without him. None of us could. Brother, wanted to share what the Lord showed me and told me during our prayer time and I was, I was going home. Brother Paul, the Lord said my children need to call out to me as their Prince of Peace in such a time as this. Where there is so much fear, doubt, and deception, we need to trust him for he is our Prince of Peace. Who can give anyone the peace that surpasses all understanding? Jesus, only Jesus. Amen. The other thing I want to share with you is that God has a holy remnant. Brother, as we were marching, I saw Noah in his time, all eight of them. I saw Lot in his time, all three of them. And I saw Gideon, all 300 of them. Let me share this scripture. And then he goes to put Judges 7, starting at verse 6. And the numbers of them that lapping by putting their hands to their mouths were 300 men, but all the remnant of the people kneeled down upon their knees to drink water. The Lord told me, this is who I am looking for, the ones who will kneel before me and take freely my living water. Brother Paul, that is what is happening again. This time the remnant is the true church of Jesus Christ. Ones who will go when he says go. Ones who obey his voice. Ones watching and praying and looking for his soon return. God have mercy, brother. Just like Jesus said, narrow is the way to life eternal and very few find it. Just like this event, brother, very few came and stood for Jesus. But the ones who did, they are on the straight and narrow path. Amen. Brother, just like the other times of judgment for Israel or the whole world, it has always been a remnant, a group of people who love the Lord and serve him, a set apart people for the Lord. So the second part of this word that Jesus spoke is there are a lot of people are and they better get off. There, there is where a lot of people are and they better get off this road now, not tomorrow for today is the day of salvation. The broad way where many go and this leads to destruction and hell. God have mercy. So, brother, this is what the Lord showed me and told me. Oh, one more thing. The Lord confirmed from the prophesying on the grass the shaking we felt, because we felt an earthquake as the brother from the Lord's hour was prophesying, prophesying that God, I will shake the land. There was an earthquake. And the next day after the event, there was a 3.7 earthquake I felt from the hotel room. A 3.7 earthquake. Uh... The, the shaking we felt is going to intensify and more shaking is coming. And that came to pass. So, um, again, that's Brother Buddy Smith. In no particular order here. I'm just going through them. Here, I've, I've made a folder. Candace. Minister Paul, just wanted to give you a quick update. When I left the Oklahoma State Capitol on Saturday, so this is a person that had showed up, I called the yellow cab, now watch this, to go back to the hotel. The cab driver was the pastor. I'm going to repeat that again. 
<laughs> the cab driver was the pastor of Servants Church in Oklahoma City. He asked what was going on at the state capitol, and I explained that we were all go doing there, what we were all doing there. He said if he knew about it, he would have come along too. Well, now people know. <laughs> Amen. The interesting part to me is that he said, quote, we are no longer a Christian nation, and I doubt if we ever were, unquote. I have always felt we were. We didn't argue, and as it was a short ride to the hotel and he had another call, I said goodbye and was a little taken back. As I stepped out of the cab, the Lord gave me a scripture, Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That just hit me when I read that. <laughs> this is from the Apostle Paul, who often claimed he was, quote, a Roman citizen. It was great meeting you, and thanks for the extra Street Preacher episode on Martin Luther King Boulevard Classic. And it brought in tears. We're talking about the, the, if you haven't seen it, there's a testimony that James and I, the Lord led us right to them when we were lost in a neighborhood. And he gave the, this tear bringing uh, humble testimony of what, what God has done in his life. And, and that's already up. Uh, God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Be Mac. So let's continue. Praise God. This is a person named Jesse. I went back and forth with in fellowship and prayer for a few years now. Jesse says, uh, I was involved in the prayer with Amanda. She's talking about end time messenger right here on uh, several people had just held prayer vigils online and in real time. And I guess Sister Amanda there in Texas um, held an online prayer vigil while we marched. And remember, this was just one state, but now it's growing to multiple states. And uh, this, so this is from that uh, online prayer vigil. Her, her channel is called End Time Messenger. It's Amanda Lynn. So she said, I was involved in the prayer with Amanda that day in chat, and at the same time she was praying rapid fire in tongues, I began to do the same. You know, and actually, Jesse here, now that I think about it, sent me that blue anointing cloth you always see me holding, whether it be in church preaching or online uh, testifying, it, I still use that healing cloth. It came from her, her woman's ministry there where she lives. We both felt heated. I told her I felt like tongues of fire were all over my body. We both prayed together for a sister to receive healing, and she did get healed off her left shoulder. The pain began to leave her. See, the healing wasn't just in Oklahoma. It was online in a prayer vigil for people that were standing in the gap for others. For you know, And they didn't do this for Paul, Oklahoma. They did this for Jesus, and a person was healed in this prayer online prayer vigil. As a witness and participant to this during the march, let God get all the glory. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Jesus. It says, I also have a relationship problem. And later that day, I feel this for someone else right here. See, this is why we give testimonies. This is for someone else. Later that day, my relationship was restored. Same day I got to go eat out with my parents, including my mom that has lung cancer and on an oxygen tank. It was amazing, Paul. I, I even mentioned that many are falling to their knees in repentance and praying to Amanda and the other sister. She mentioned it. And it was happening where you were around the same time. It has come to pass, brother. So that's Jesse. And I bear witness of her as being a truth, uh, speaking the truth. This is from Beth Myers. I prayed on the day you guys went to Oklahoma from 11.35 a.m. to 12 p.m., I was overwhelmed for the whole day, and that night I woke up from just a weird, normal dream and felt a very strong urgency to anoint my head and my apartment and cats with oil and prayer that night. I also did that in the uh, same exact thing in the hotel I was in. I also told my parents and others to do the same on Facebook. Great evil is coming, this I feel, and the lukewarm need to decide whom they're going to serve. Got to be fully committed to God, or they won't go in the rapture on your latest YouTube video you asked people to give their testimony or what happened when they prayed or helped with that Jesus Matters event so just wanted to share I've been in prayer a lot more lately Lord help us September this year is going to be a doozy God bless and keep us your sister from Kansas and that's again Beth Myers 
and all of these names I recognize. This is from Martha Ferguson, who was actually in our 2012 Pal Talk chat room. So over three years, this is a this is a mighty woman of God, and I pray that the Lord brings many people to her because God is using her in ways you know that that are unseen. So this is Sister Martha Ferguson. She also has a YouTube channel. Brother Paul, joining you in prayer for this ministry trip you took to Oklahoma has brought about changes for me and a cousin of mine. We have an aunt which is getting on in years. She is perfectly able to care for herself but is lonely and in need of company. She lives near my cousin Pat. They are about an hour and a half away from me. For the past few months I've been going and spending some time with our aunt to keep her company and to take some of the load off of my cousin. Our aunt is quite demanding and can be rude and actually pretty crude. My cousin and I had decided to get together for some prayer and Bible study time during my visits there. We invited our aunt to join us, but she just seemed uninterested and quarrelsome about Pat and I spending any time together. Even when Pat and I got together, we spent more time complaining over our aunt's behavior than in prayer. So you hear, you're seeing Jesus moving in this whole event and in people's lives all around the world. When I began praying for you and your mission trip, something changed. Shifted in the spiritual. And I, I know everybody that was there can bear witness to this. My cousin and I both repented of our complaining over Aunt Jean. We knew she was not our problem. The enemy is. Emphasis. And we had let him influence our behavior amen suddenly i'm getting the holy spirit goosebumps all over me suddenly i don't dread a few days visits with aunt jean i see it as a chance to minister to a wounded soul she is she suffered a lot in her life and i believe i'm beginning to see her how jesus sees her this isn't earth shattering news but it's wonderful i'm seeing where i need to make changes and no longer concentrating on what changes others need to make god bless you sister martha wow continuing on you know i met there was a brother who was a prayer moderator uh we we had like three moderators uh lisa lark uh, lisa here in uh, central california one of them was named rod rod he goes by rod for sooners he showed up. I didn't even know he was there till about a half hour. He said, do you know who I am? <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> I mean, there's 40 people there. No. He said, I'm Rod. I'm like, Rod, this, this, this young man lives right there in Oklahoma City. And he's been sharing things that are coming and things that have been revealing to him. And uh, <clears throat> we talked on the phone. He was a moderator of that same 2012 Pal Talk thing. So this is three years that I've been fellowshipping with this brother. I got to meet him face to face. The Holy Spirit moved in his life. He's, he, he said uh, the, he, he, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is, this is a second confirmation, which is what I just preached on last night and preaching on again Sunday, the gifts of the Spirit, are now activating in his life. He said, you prayed with anointing oil and prayed for me to receive them. So you know, what, what we did was we went around and we laid hands and anointed everybody's head with oil and prayed over them as led by the Holy Spirit. And that's his testimony. Vicki Balderas, uh, she was there on the list that wants to give a testimony of what God done in her life. Barbara Emery. Yeah, I, I, I've been following Barbara Emery and Debbie Long uh, putting together this Austin, Texas Jesus Matters on Saturday the, uh, the 19th. And so uh, I'm going to be touching on that in the video all of itself. But that's who she's talking about here, Bob, Barbara Emery, I-M-R-I-E. I've been following, this is her testimony. I've been following your videos for close to six months and mentioned to my daughter, Cynthia Blinn uh, Duderstadt, that you were told by our Lord to go and march at the Oklahoma State Capitol. We were both immediately told to sow seed to help you get to Oklahoma. Then I was prompted to look up what was happening here in Texas. It seemed that the commandments were to stay on the Capitol grounds here in Austin, Texas. So the next thing we knew, we were both feeling in our spirit that we should drive to Oklahoma and march with you. 
Of course, that meant the grandchildren were coming along and we knew we needed to pray about them marching with us. We were not sure at that time if we would be met with any opposition. And I'm telling you, I bear witness to that 100% because I wasn't either. And now you know. Because of the uh, Baphomet statue, our answer to prayer was it will be safe to have them come with us concerning her grandchildren. As we crossed the Oklahoma border from Texas, we immediately felt oppression. Did anybody else feel that? I did. James did. It was just in the air. Both children were sleeping, so we both prayed a binding prayer, and the oppression seemed to be somewhat better as we drove closer to the capital. We decided to stay the night in Norman and drove the last 30 to 45 minutes into Oklahoma City. They drove from Texas, and we met. I knew I would not be able to walk all seven rounds as I had a complete hip replacement last January. Look at this. And just had x-rays that showed my right knee is bone on bone and in need of complete replacement. I made it around about half the rounds. When we neared the third round, my daughter went to, get, went to the car to get water. She had been praying as she marched, and of course we were all in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. She said as she neared the car, she fell on her knees and was repenting for the nation and America. And for man's laws being so corrupted, she was praying that the Lord's will be done and that the walk would find mercy and would remain intact at the capital. On the way home, we were remarking how smoothly things had gone and that we were all so refreshed and glad we were involved. Praise the creator, Yahweh and Jesus. Hashtag Jesus does matter. Barbara Emery, Cynthia Blinn Duderstadt, Kaya Duderstadt, and Caleb Duderstadt. It, you see a pattern here of everybody experiencing the same thing, the same opposition, the same breakthroughs from all over. Brother Luke. And also let me mention Brother Timothy. Flew in from Maryland and he was with us uh, most of the time too. Hi, brother. It's Luke. I just wanted to share my experience in Oklahoma. It was awesome getting together with that many Born again followers of Jesus. Let me get a drink of water here real quick because I'm pressing on through this. I don't, it's not on a clock. Thank you, Jesus. I definitely felt the Lord there with us and his presence was strong with me my whole drive home. Also on my way home, I asked Jesus to help me find a place to eat some food. I was getting close to Tulsa, Oklahoma and figured I would get something there. I pulled over in the downtown area and googled good places to eat in Tulsa. The White River Fish Market popped up and so I put it in my GPS. When I got there, there were long rows of tables so you could grab a seat wherever you could find one. It was busy so I sat by a lot of people and they were friendly so we got to talking and they could tell I was from Minnesota. This brother drove from Minnesota. I guess Minnesotans talk different. They asked me why I was there, and I got to tell them all about Jesus Matters and the gathering we had. You see how many people? This is Tulsa, Oklahoma. Here. They asked me uh, uh, why I was there. I know Jesus set this whole thing up. Also, I got born again about three years ago and gave up all my worldly friends. I've been paying for a like-minded Christian friend, and God answered my prayer that day. Someone else that showed up exchanged contact information with me, and we have been talking over the phone almost every day since. What an awesome God we serve. It was nice to meet you and pray together. I love you, brother. And you know what? I love you, too. It's like I'm just reliving this whole thing. And then uh, Paulette, Paulette Smith had an amazing uh, healing on her kneecap. She was praying the whole time. Uh, she gives this testimony. And let me also mention that um, Sister Rachel from another country around the world in the UK, I believe she's in London, the night before I was to leave to fly back, and I had two flights, and I'm not a big flyer, go to Salt Lake City, uh, layover, and then uh, from Oklahoma City, uh, Roy Rogers Airport, and then from Salt Lake to California. 
I, I was I was a little concerned, you know, what was going to happen, what God had planned. Not too much, but I was concerned. And I knew that coming back, it was just the beginning of something big. Uh, and that I was to be home by September 1st. And she had a vision, and she shared this vision with me privately, about how she saw my plane landing safely. She actually had a vision of the plane landing safely and me getting off, looking a bit hesitant, you know, as I looked around. And the reason why God gave her, in my opinion, this vision was because it, it, I slept so much better knowing that God had given someone a vision that I arrived safely. And I did arrive safely, and I did look around hesitant. This vision did come to pass, and now I know why is the next day, the very next day, the Lord told me, I want you to arrange this in Sacramento. And in closing, put your comments in here and share your part because it's all about Jesus and not about me. I didn't know till I got back, but my wife took it upon herself, Gail, to walk around our backyard seven times and pray at 10 a.m. in California so her prayers would be with us which at 10 a.m. California was 12 p.m. when we began our march. My, my wife was at home marching our background. God, look, God is doing miraculous things. And, and so I wanted to share this and get this up. And, um, and I know more is coming. Feel free to use the comment section, please, to share what Jesus did for you. Because this video I'm uploading today is to say that Jesus matters. And what he will do for those who are following him in obedience. And I pray that this blesses you. In, in your name, Jesus, you surely do matter. Amen.